Hey guys, Stefan and Summer here from All Of Road. In today's video, we start our desert series for 2022. We're first going to explore the Una Data track. Then we're going to drive down to the Madigan Line, driving west-east with a few little detours on the way. Next up, we will be exploring the southern end of the Hay River Trek, which we missed out last year. And before we start, we would greatly appreciate if you would like, share and subscribe. And maybe even consider heading over to Patreon or buy me a coffee and support us with a cup of coffee or two per month, or in summer's case, a hot chocolate. Thanks a lot. Let's get into it. We just spent 10 amazing days in the Flinders Ranges and here we are at Warwina Station getting ready to make our way towards the desert. Get a chicken out of bed in the morning. It's always difficult, isn't it? Yes. At early light. I said to leave this beautiful place. Warwina Station. But now off to Lake Creek and another trek and then some desert. drive through the small township of Beltana when you drive out from Borowina. Beltana is truly a remarkable state heritage listed town in outback South Australia. Settlers began arriving in the area in the 1850s and 60s and the town was surveyed in 1873. It's hard to imagine today that the little town grew to boast a population of 390 people with 70 houses by 1883. Changing patterns of employment, transportation and resource exploitation have seen a change over time. However, Beltana has refused to lie down and die like many other Australian outback towns. Many houses in Beltana have been restored and it currently has an active permanent population of 35 people. not too bad. We just passed Lake Creek. Uh, funny, saw Ange and uh, Chris there. Oh, we didn't see them. We saw the outfit Unimog. Um, I parked behind of it, and man, that is a big beast. I can tell you that. I, I love a Unimog. I think one day I will own one but a very different travel than uh, with a Unimog like that. Certainly most of the stuff we have done on this trip, there's no way we would have got that Unimog through there. Then we went to Copley, had breakfast at the Copley Bakery, and now we on our way towards the desert. Um, we'll see how far we get today, not sure. That's but busy, huh? Brilliant, all the volunteer work. I've been in Farina quite a few times, but it is always interesting to see how the restoration and the town progresses. Underground bakery, oven is still on. I hear the fire roaring and it's nice and warm in here. So all the bread from the bakery is still made in here, but not the pastry. Uh, again, issue with the Explorers. I just uh, 
had a sign coming up that a new version is available. I have no reception here, so I just click remind me later, but now the maps are gone. Again, if that was the only app I'm relying on, I don't know, I probably could now stop, restart it. I hope eventually it comes back. But that's why I really use uh, the new memory map for all here as my main app. So far, that's my first big test. The app is new. It's the latest version of Memory Maps. Just has been released, but I have been um, involved in some of the features and testing and so on. And so far, that's the first big trip I used it on. I really can't fault it. It hasn't crashed a single time. It, yeah, it hasn't given me any grief. It just does what it's supposed to do. And that's what you expect from a navigation app. Yeah, we just left Marie, which was out of fuel. And again, explains quite well why in Australia really long range fuel tanks are pretty much a given. 325 per liter. Fellas from coast to coast here with a bit of Amarok V6 electrical issues. And we've got wood. What happened, my We have a uh, service lot come on. Um, okay. 20 k's out of town in on the Amarok. Uh, going into limp mode? Going into limp mode, that's right. 80 k's an hour and that's it. Yeah. Okay. So we've uh, been advised to go and find a service technician. Okay. Closest one's Alice Springs, of course. 750 uh, kilometres away, I think. So. <laughs> I just did you see that post on the Amarok forum of that guy who had similar issues? Did he? Oh, I don't know, similar, but he ended up, had to cut his trip short, needed a two and a half thousand K tow because the closest dealer who could help him, mind you, he sold the Amarok now. <laughs> that was his last post in there. Uh, now, I hope you guys get that sorted. Do you have a fault code reader? Yes. No, we don't. No. We don't. no. If we had something like that, we could actually read the fault, clear it, clear it and yeah. then carry on. But we yeah. don't have anything as... So. New vehicles, huh? without fault yeah. code reader, you yeah. pretty much, if yeah. something goes wrong, you're stuffed. Yeah, bugger. Yeah. bugger. Yeah. I, I hope you get we it sorted. We made it home in we War, and he said the same thing. He, he knows all about this sort of stuff. Yeah. Said, well, you've got no reader? Yeah. You're basically in a world of hurt, really. You've got to have one. I had the Discovery 3 for a while, and the first thing I bought yeah. is the, the yeah. fault code reader. Yeah. And I had plenty of... Yes. It was time to look for a place to stay for the night, and I found on my map one siding which was a little bit further away from the Ertnadetta track, and we thought we have a look at We're it. We're at some old ruins. This must be the living area or something. It's got the fireplace. Yeah, that's the old Anna Creek siding ruins. There's a lot of stuff on the floor. There's more there. First day on the desert leg. We left Warawina in the morning. Now we bit past William Creek and for a long time I always wanted to uh, camp in one of the ruins. So we're here at the old Anna Creek ruin, which is a bit further away, tucked away from the Ernandetta track. You can't really see it. And finally, this is the right spot for this. So have a look. So that is the old Anna Creek siding. Anna Creek, of course, was the biggest cattle station in the world. <laughs> And look at this. This is our room for the night. So we sheltered a bit from the wind. Pretty nice. Was fairly clean this one here. Beautiful views. And I think we can be sleeping very well here. Thank you. 
Summer's kitchen is open, isn't it? Open for business. What's for dinner tonight? I'm having vegetables, meat, <coughs> rice with lemongrass. Kefir lime? Yeah, lemongrass, mm -hmm. kefir lime, saucy. And then it's all going to make a beautiful Thai dish. No, Vietnamese. Okay. Served. Good. Yours. And look at this. Yep, beautiful view. Beautiful dinner. That's a bit of a sunset there. I don't know whether you can see that red actually. It's just disappearing there. Good? Yep. My little chef. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be really more pleased having my girl with me here. She is such a good travel buddy, I have to say. You too. laughing quietly here looking at the maps and then thinking someone from overseas who has never been in Australia planning a trip to the interior you see like Gatewater Hole, Pea Creek and Laura Creek and William Creek and Nandamura River and Watermura River and so on and you reckon shit that's gonna be beautiful country there and it is beautiful country but it's got to be country which is probably super green plenty of opportunities to swim and then you come here and you realize all these rivers all these creeks hardly ever have water if they have water it's for a very short time and yeah very easy to misjudge this country so many things to see along the Nadella track if you bother looking driven past here I don't know how often and this time we're gonna have a look yeah, and one not faced at all from all of this is chicken having a little snooze here even with all the corrugation and the pretty rough uh, going here towards the old uh, telegraph station it's pretty washed out here yeah. I have driven past this turn-off sign so often that it was about time to explore the old peak telegraph repeater station. This pretty rough and corrugated four-wheel drive track heads east through the Denison Ranges. These ranges are the outlier of the Flinders Ranges and contain a stunning array of ancient rock types. The site contains a few mound springs which provided a permanent freshwater source dried from the Atasian basement. In 1870, the Peak Telegraph Repeater Station was the furthest outpost of settlement in South Australia. It soon became one of 11 repeater stations established in 150 to 200 km intervals across Australia to retransmit the telegraph signals along the line. John McDowell Stewart, in whose footsteps we stood on Mulululu Station, came across the Mount Springs here in 1859, describing strong flow and beautiful country. He named it Freeling Springs, but of course the Aboriginal community used these springs for thousands of years beforehand. And the native name is Yaria.
This is Mess Hut and was originally built for the pastoral peak station. It's got some lovely flowers growing in it. This building was the government cart shed and smithy. I think this was an old bedroom, old bed frame, fireplace. Yeah, you come out. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Come to me, come to me, come to me, come to me. So on the very heavy corrugation that comes forward, mind you, I probably could tighten that more, but otherwise, yeah, that, that's holding up quite well, I have to say. Corrugation, as you see here, is pretty shocking. We had two options to get to Mount Dea from Odnadetta. One was via Dalhousie Springs and the other one was via Eringa and Blood Creek. We opted for the Eringa route because we thought it may be less corrugated than that bit from Dalhousie Springs back to Mount Dare. Yeah, the road is pretty average, uh, I have to say. It's uh, fairly corrugated. Eringa waterhole once more. Last time we were here, plenty of water. I went swimming last time in this. Yeah, you went swimming in here last time, huh? Yeah, one thing I noticed with the laser lamps that the bolts ran loose. This one I nearly lost it. This one I nearly lost. This one is gone. Yeah, on this side here we already put another one in and they were tight as uh, this one here is gone as well on that side have a look that's where it's supposed to be oh and in there Once more at Mount Air. Windy. Today, I can't remember where the shower block was. I think somewhere here. Gravity fed cold, gravity fed hot. Okay. So, day two of my icebreaker cool light merino super light summer shirt and then my icebreaker merino 260 that is now i'm wearing that for nine days um, but with an underlayer and it's still it still passes the smell test unbelievable <laughs> 
I used the time to have a yarn with Graham and Shani Scott, who both run the Mount Dare Hotel for quite some time now. Chatting about Joachim's dozer recovery, Graham shows me some of the recent recoveries he has done around Mount Dare. A beautiful morning at Mount Dare, no wind. Getting ready now. Caught up with the guys with that Emma Rock again at Mount Dare. And yeah, the issue was twofold. So his, he had the car service beforehand and they didn't put the clamp for the air, a turbo air intake hose back on and or the, didn't really tighten it. That slipped off and put the car in limp mode. Um, they also updated the firmware and uh, apparently that also caused an issue which going to limp mode so he had to go back to Kuba Pedi. In Kuba Pedi someone had a diagnostic tool, he reset the fault codes, uh, the car went out of limp mode and he also told him that he had three Amarok's here recently who had a similar issue where they had been serviced recently, a new firmware had been applied and that um, yeah, pretty much put the engine in limp mode. Graceful degradation? No, because if that would have happened a day later in the Medigan, uh, it would have been not good. And yeah, one of the reasons why I drive old cars and not new cars. By the way, these are the recovered cars and trailers out of the Simpson by Graham which need to be shipped back. Uh, three minutes? Three minutes. Can we get a coffee for the road? Yeah. Can I get a hot chocolate? I still hot chocolate. So now the desert really starts. We left out there and we on our way to Old Adeto. Apparently there are again caretakers and you can get scones in the morning. We haven't had brekkie yet, so that sounds good, doesn't it, Summer? Yeah. Looking Excited forward to either. scones. Yeah, we're just on the bin track here and the bull dust is crazy. Uh, for memory there was bull dust on the, on the bins, but you know, for some holes filled with it but at the moment there are 100 meters 200 meters of only bull dust and holes in it Can't complain. <laughs> it's good to see not much has changed here. Beautiful. Right. Right, it? Well, that is good. Not much has changed. I really feared because they had no caretaker for some time now. That, yeah, I don't know. Kobe said uh, after a big sandstorm, he often spends a day to clean it out. All his bedroom. Did you see the old radio? No. It's so clean. Yeah. Okay. That's Molly's bedroom. She had a view out there. And also the aircon. <laughs> Good. I know. Oh, Papa, look what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. And they move me No. I'm 
Okay, most of it's still there. It's a bit cleaned up here. It was a bit messy last time. The old airplane stuff is gone. There was an old airplane camera, surveying camera. Yeah, that's sleepy, I think. Best water around town here. Oh, just left Old and Dado. Uh, good to see it having a caretaker again, uh, David and Helen. Um, Helen was nice enough to make us some scones even though we were late. We had a good shower. Um, I filled up with fresh water. Best water you can find at Old and Dado around here, that's for sure. And yeah, it's, it's good to see that place still alive. These guys are here for two months, volunteer their time, everything unpaid. And yeah, my big thanks out to them actually for doing that. And yeah, keeping these pieces of history kind of alive or helping to keep it alive. Acacia Puce, a wadi tree. Only one of two stands, I think, in the world. It's a super hard wood. It was very desirable for building because people say you can shoot a 22 at it and it won't go in. And it makes perfect timber for houses. Very spiky, very sharp. And the white ants don't like it. So yeah, and that's why this is in a reserve here, because there are not many around at all. My dad's just putting the flag on and hopefully it stays on longer than last time. Because last time, last desert trip, it just kept unscrewing itself and falling off. So hopefully this one lasts longer. Yeah. Prevent them from rattling loose. Eyes it helps it. Mm. Still, still check them. Now we have the flag up. Mm. I just filmed a jar with some of our first desert sand so that when all the shades change of the sand, I can fill the jar up and it will look cool. And that'll be the second one of them I have at home, so that'll be good. The first bit of the Medigan was pretty corrugated, which I had very different in memory from four years ago. If you go through the desert, you see all these petty melons introduced from Africa as camel food. Not much good really for anything else. Some birds eat them. That's not right. They look good, but not for human consumption. Oh, oh, they don't smell that bad, do they? No, they don't smell that. They smell a little bit it green melon. Like green melon. Yeah. Mm. But you can't eat them. Do you get, get sick? Yeah, they cause you get pretty bad indigestion from them. And they come in all these There's green so flavors. There's so many. And have look, a look at this at the... big one. Mm. Uh, it's emerald, guys. We're approaching a group. We Got saw it all nice in the Oh, they might have some stories to tell. I'm oh, not sure they can. Hello! How are you? What are you doing? Can't, can't get rid of you! Are you bloody fellas following us? Ah, uh, sneaking around. Well, if, they, if they're not, we'll oh, stay here. <laughs> the increased traffic on the Medigan, which causes the corrugation, unfortunately also brings some grubs. Medigan, campsite, rubbish everywhere, toilet paper. Come on! Yes, they are. And they can 
Tonight in the desert. Oh, the jaffa maker is actually the right size. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please keep in mind this is a self-funded channel, so I would greatly appreciate if you could help me out by sharing, liking and subscribing. And if you can, please consider head over to Patreon or buy me a coffee and with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month you can really help me making these videos. Thanks a lot for watching and see you along the tracks.